Welcome into this Photoshop tutorial brought to you as always by tutvid.com. You saw the title. Today we're talking about double exposures in Photoshop. Remember, the best way to support this video, if you feel so inclined, is hit the like button down below. Also, subscribe to this channel so you never miss another video in the future. And buy my Photoshop course. That helps a ton. Let's jump into the video. All right, here is the double exposure effect that we're going to create, roughly. Uh, we're going to do our best job impersonating this uh, double exposure effect. It all begins with a new document in Photoshop file, new. And I'm going to do a document that's 2560 by 2560. RGB color mode is great. And hit create. Here it is. Wonderful. Uh, now, I have a photo of this guy. And this is the guy that I'm going to be using for my double exposure. You can go and find any image, any stock photo, anything you like. You can really create double exposures out of anything. Um, now, the nice thing about this is while he does have complex hair, it's sort of isolated against the gray sky. So I would do something like grab the quick selection tool and go ahead and paint a selection over him uh, just like that. Hold down my alter option key, paint away this extra junk that showed up. We're just really going to burn through this selection creating process so as not to waste a lot of time. I would zoom in and I would just paint over this part of his shirt, make sure that's included. By the way, I have auto enhance ticked on. I usually work with that. If your computer can handle it, uh, it usually does good things. Right here, his lip. We want to make sure we include the entire lip and the highlight here on his nose. Go ahead and click that to make sure that's included. I like to make sure the entire eyelash is included. We'll correct that with select and mask. And everything else looks great. So when you have a rough selection like this, that's that's really nice. Uh, we're going to go ahead and choose the select and mask option. Now, many people don't like this, but Adobe's working on it. They're trying to make it better. Um, and right now, it leaves a little to be desired, but um, hopefully it'll get better soon. Now, the tool that we're going to use here is the refine edge tool. I'm going to use my left and right bracket keys to make the brush bigger or smaller. And I'm going to use command plus or control plus to zoom in on this image a little bit and you can see around the eyelash we still have some gray sky so I'm gonna hit the left bracket key a few times to make my brush smaller and I'll paint over that eyelash like that and boom most of the gray goes away great I'm gonna paint here over the brow and it should bring back most of the brow great um, now up here I want to make the brush a little bit bigger because the sort of edge of the hair if you will is a little bit wider see it's about as wide as my brush is. so I'm gonna begin by painting down here I'm gonna paint up and over the edge of his mohawk and what Photoshop and select a mask are going to do is it's really going to go and help isolate that uh, bit of mohawk hair against our background and just do it do a pretty decent job of cutting it out and you'll see it's a little deceiving because the transparent background makes it hard to pick up any like trace elements that are left behind um, but it's going to do certainly a good enough job here for our double exposure once you have your selection uh, as I do uh, we're going to come over here and choose this output to area and I'm going to choose new layer with layer mask and I will hit OK. And you can see Photoshop outputs this new layer with layer mask. Now, we really didn't need to go through all of that because I already have him cut out over here. And actually, one thing that I did was here on the layer mask, I used the polygonal lasso tool and I made this diagonal selection across his body, right? And I made sure that I had the mask selected and I just filled this with black by going edit, fill, and choosing contents black. And what that does is it just fills that part of the mask with black. So we have this diagonal cutoff of his body, right? I just shift click the mask, by the way, that allows you to temporarily disable slash enable a mask. All right, I'm going to grab my move tool and we're going to drag this guy over to our untitled document, drop him in place. Now, before I go any further, I'm going to go file, save as, and I'll probably just save this as double exposure recorded, hit save. It's going to say, would you like to replace it? Yeah, I'll replace it and we'll hit OK. Now, we have him here in our own document, and before we go any further, I want to let you guys know, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I'm selling a course all about how to retouch images in Photoshop, and I think you just might like it. You can use the link that popped up up there to uh, go ahead and check it out, pick up a copy for yourself. If you pick up a copy, it just helps support what we're doing here on Tutvid or in, uh, on, yeah, on Tutvid.com would be proper terminology. Uh, and if you pick up a copy of the course, thank you very much. If not, let's get back to this video, because this one is free. All right, so back here in the video, uh, I'm going to double click on my background layer to unlock it, hit OK, and we can just drag it right to the garbage. When we're sure we have the mask kind of settled and in place and we're not missing any pixels or we don't have any, you know, like part of his hair cut off or anything, I, I, we want to right click on our masked person or animal or whatever it is we're using to work with this double exposure. Right click and just convert it to a smart object and then go uh, edit free transform. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit and I'm going to hold down shift. Shift and Alt, so that would be Shift and Option on the Mac. And I'm just going to scale this guy down, probably, I don't know, something kind of, kind of right around there. 
bigger bigger isn't necessarily bad. And there we go. Cool. So we got Maddie sitting here in roughly the middle of our document. Let's go ahead and add a gradient behind him. So I'm going to hit this little half black, half white uh, circle here and choose gradient fill layer. And you can see it's given me the sort of this default color to transparent option. I'm going to choose black to white, but I'm going to double click the black slider here. And I'm going to set my color hex code to EAE uh, 6B8. It's a very sort of light yellow color. I'm going to double click my white stop and I'm going to set this to FFF DE2. So, and all this is is a, a lighter yellow color. Hit OK. And maybe we'll set the angle of this gradient to something like, I don't know, 50. Uh, that's fine. So we just have some, some motion of color and light in our background. You could go with like a radial gradient if you wanted, uh, but let's keep it simple. Linear gradient at about 57 degrees is what we're going with. Hit OK. Wonderful. Drag it down below Maddie, And you can see we've got him here over this background. Let's select him. I'm going to shift him backward just a little bit. And I'm going to apply a black and white adjustment to him. Now, you may be thinking, hey, black and white adjustment layer, right? But no, we don't have to do that. We did convert him to a smart object. So we can go image adjustments, black and white. And it's going to apply this adjustment as a smart filter. Let's boost the yellows here. Let's boost the reds as well. It's going to lighten him up a little bit. But hey, maybe not too much, right? Eh, you know what? He does need to be kind of light. So we're going to boost him up, make him nice and bright. Hit OK. And you can see here it shows up black and white as like a smart filter. If we wanted to edit it, just double click the words black and white. And we can make him darker or make him brighter, whatever needs to be done. Hit OK. Uh, that's wonderful. Now what we need to do is bring our trees image into Photoshop. So I'm going to navigate out to my finder. I've got trees.jpg. I can just drag it right onto my document, drop it. It's going to import it here as a smart object. So let's hit the little check icon. You can see it has this little icon. That indicates that trees, this trees image, is a smart object. Uh, before we do anything with this, we need to do a couple things to the trees layer. Remember, we have a smart object here, so we don't have to mess around with adjustment layers if we don't want. We can just go image adjustments, and let's begin with some levels. And I'm going to boost the blacks a little bit. Let me bring them up to like 10 or so. And I'm going to push the uh, gray midpoint over to 0 0.9. That looks pretty good. And I'm actually going to hit OK. Uh, one of the keys with really good double exposures, particularly with graphics you're overlaying like this, is it's really, really great, whether it's a cityscape or a landscape, whatever it may be, that you have part of the image go to solid white. Because if we set this to like the layer of blend mode of multiply, up here, if this was solid white, it would all just disappear and we would have the perfect edges of all of these trees just disappearing to nothing. See, if we leave this sort of just off white, when we set it to a blend mode and begin blending it with our image, it kind of starting to look a little double exposure right? But we would have to create this super complex, very difficult, time-consuming, lengthy selection to really make this look great. Well, if we, I'm going to set this back to normal, if we go back into our levels, double-click levels, if we just make sure that this is solid white, well, all of that's going to disappear when we set this layer to the blend mode multiply. So let's drag the white point back to like 225. We're going to go a little ludicrous here, but that's definitely solid white now. We can still see the tops of some trees. Great. We absolutely want that. Hit OK. Before we go any further, I want to throw another adjustment on your image adjustments, selective color. And here in selective color, we're going to go white and I'm going to reduce bla the black point all the way to negative 100% really crank it up there. We really want to make sure we get rid of any of that brightness left in the sky. Then we're going to go to neutrals and I don't like this blue cast. So the opposite of blue is yellow. So let's push yellow up to like plus 20 ish. And then I'm going to come down here to blacks and maybe we'll push a little bit more yellow and reduce magenta a little bit, which is going to give us more green and maybe push cyan up just a couple ticks. And then I'm going to reduce the blacks as well, maybe like to negative five or six. It's going to give me just a slightly faded look. Hit OK. And now when I set this to the blend mode of multiply, you can see we just have these perfect trees popping out and they're, you know, they look good. They look great. It's ready to be blended with our, uh, with our photo here. So I need to transform this. Let's go edit free transform. And it's going to say, look, smart filters are going to be shut off temporarily while you're transforming. No problem. Hit OK. I'm going to hold down shift and alt that shift and option on the Mac. And I'm going to drag this up, 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 up. And I want these trees, I want some trees at least, to be sort of popping out of the top of his head. In fact, I might right click on this and choose to flip it horizontal because this diagonal line of trees kind of runs along with his head uh, just so wonderfully. You know what, now I'm gonna go, I'm gonna flip it back horizontal. I'm gonna, hmm, how do I wanna do this? Maybe I'll pull this down a little bit. I'll stretch these trees out just a touch to make them, mm, I can't make them too much bigger. Let's go. I, d I want those trees to be popping out of the top of his head because if you can imagine, these new trees are going to sort of form his mohawk. All right, so we'll pull this this way just a little bit. We'll pull it this way a bit more. Let's pull it down. I just want it to pretty much cover his entire body. 
if you can imagine. Let's push this up just a little bit. Ooh, you know what? I gotta go back to free transform. Commander control T is the hotkey. I'm gonna squish that up a little bit. It's not quite looking as good as I thought. Let's go ahead somewhere right around there. Should be good. We can we're gonna blend this together down here, so don't be too too concerned. It looks really bad, looks way, way too dark. Don't don't worry. Uh, what we'll do is we'll drag the trees down beneath Maddie Mohawk. Now the double exposure effect disappears. Well, what we want to do, and before we do this, I think I'm going to give him just a little bit of like a, a greenish cyan tint. So I'll use that same selective color adjustment, image adjustments, selective color. And we'll come down here to like neutrals. I'll throw a couple drips of yellow onto him, throw a couple drips of cyan onto him. Uh, maybe drop out some magenta, which is going to drop a little bit of green into there. Let's go into the blacks and do the same thing. Boost a little cyan, boost a little yellow. Something like that will probably work. Hit OK. And we're going to set this to the blend mode screen. So you can see now he's very, very bright on top of our trees. We can adjust all of this by, you know, messing around with opacity and masks and things like that. But I think first and foremost, what we want to do is mask the trees to the shape of our model. So I'm going to hold down Command or Control and click on the, the layer thumbnail of Maddie Mohawk. This layer thumbnail. Command or Control and click. Loads him as a selection. Go down to the trees layer and we're going to go layer layer mask, reveal selection. You can see, gets rid of everything else, hides everything else. Now, we have an obvious problem, and that is we can really see uh, the edges of our model uh, kind of like crazy, because you, you see how it's all that light haloing? We're gonna take care of that in a second, but first and foremost, let's extend these trees beyond the top of his head by selecting the mask on that trees layer, and you can see there it is, the white outline is around the mask, and uh, I'm gonna grab my brush tool. We've got, it's a pretty large brush, maybe a little bit too big. I'm gonna use my left bracket keys to make it a little smaller and we want to paint with our foreground color set to white so hit the letter x to flip your foreground and background color and just paint here until all these trees begin coming through see how it just looks like a perfect uh perfect selection uh it's pretty cool uh and now back here is going to look a little wonky uh, i'm going to hit x i'm going to paint some of this away you want to just kind of be careful and this is where you, you can sort of freehand it and do as much or as little in terms of the double exposure as you like. Like that little extra tree there probably does not need to be there. Uh, that looks good. I'm going to paint away just that extra bit of tree up there. That probably also doesn't need to be there. Uh, and I think I, I kind of like the way all of that looks. Now, in order to get rid of this glassy edge, we need to throw a layer mask onto Maddie Mohawk. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to hit the new layer mask icon, the little box with the circle in it. And I'll just paint with black here, make my brush a little bit bigger. And I'll just begin painting away these edges that don't make sense. And see how that just fades everything together just so perfectly. And here I can even fade his head into the trees a little bit more. Uh, that's really great. Uh, now the mohawk looks a little bit too big because the trees back here, it's just too much. So I'm going to command or control click on Maddie Mohawk here because we want to basically paint away some of this junk down here to give it that same mohawk definition. I need to go select inverse, so I select everything outside of him. I'm painting with my foreground color set to black. I'm down here on the trees mask. I'm going to paint right in here with black. Get rid of that. And maybe what I'll even do is paint with black a little bit up there. Eh, probably not actually. Bring back white. I'm going to paint, 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 paint that to the edge. Something like that. Make sure that I've got it all painted in black up there. All right, Command or Control D to deselect. Uh, it looks a little bit better. I'm going to paint with white, so there's just a little bit of like a glowy effect there. All right, that's a little bit better. Uh, we can come and mess around with it a little bit more later if need be. What I want to do right now is duplicate this trees layer. So I'm going to just drag it down and drop it on the new layer icon, and I want to get rid of the layer mask that's associated with it. So drop that in the trash. And then we want to rotate this trees layer. So go edit, free transform. It's going to say all oh, the smart filters will be shut off. Don't worry about it. We're going to rotate the trees upside down. I'm going to hold down shift and drag that, that corner handle in. That's going to just constrain proportions. I just want to make these trees a little bit smaller. And dun, 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 dun. maybe something. I think something kind of like that would look pretty cool. And we're going to go ahead and, and uh, just apply that change. And now what we need to do is begin masking away all the stuff here that doesn't make sense. So we'll begin by loading Maddie Mohawk as a selection. Command or Control, click on him. And we're just going to create a, a mask using this, shape, uh, this selection first by going Layer, Layer Mask, Reveal Selection. So it gets rid of all the trees down here. Obviously, we want the ones you know shooting out of the bottom of his arm and his back. Uh, but also, we want this harsh line to go away. How do we do that? Well, make sure you're working on this new, in fact, we'll call this layer Angled Trees. Uh, you're working on the Angled Trees Layer Layer Mask. 
Grab your brush. Make sure it's a nice big brush. You use that right uh, square bracket key to make it big. And hit the letter X to set black as your foreground color. And just paint with black along the top part there. So you can see how that just kind of fades that right together beautifully. We still have this harsh line down here. That's from our other trees layer. So you can select the layer mask for the other trees layer, paint with black, and just fade that away. You can see how we just faded all of that together so beautifully, so nicely. Really, really great. Now we'll come back to the angled trees layer, set our foreground color to white by hitting the letter X, and we'll begin by painting in the trees that we want to show up out here. All right, so we're just painting in these trees. I'm just going to go pretty rough with it, and then we'll refine it in just a moment. Uh, something like so. Cool. And then something right around there. All right, I'm going to hit the letter X to set my foreground color back to black. And I'm going to right-click. I'm going to set the hardness of my brush to, I don't know, somewhere between 40 and 50%. I'm painting with black here, and I'm going to just get rid of some of the, uh, some of the extra, I don't know, blurriness, if you will, of our, our trees out here. I'm going to try that again. Just paint along there gently. This is where it helps to have a tablet. I'm still not using my tablet for this, but, uh, you know, die hard, as they say, or whatever. All right, we're going to go in here and just, you know, rough, I'm just roughing it in because what we need to do is get rid of this harsh line here, of this angled line of our model, and we're going to do that by jumping into the layer mask of our model. See, it's all starting to make sense. It's complicated, but it makes sense. Reduce the hardness of our brush back to zero, so we get a nice soft brush, make it a little bit bigger, and we're going to paint this uh, with, uh, we're painting with the color black on the layer mask. Now, you might say, whoa, what's going on? Why is it so crazy black? That's because both our angled trees and our straight up and down trees are set to the layer blend mode of multiply and when they overlap we get this intense blackening so what we need to do is come to our original trees layer here right the original one select that layer mask and paint some of those trees away so we really begin to fade this together all right and then we need to come to our new trees layer and all these like white glowy areas that's areas where it just needs to be filled in so we need to hit the letter x set in our foreground color to white and we're just going to begin painting in the trees see that we just blend it all together oh so beautifully can make sure that that all is going to work. We can go back to the Maddie Mohawk layer, make this a little bit bigger, and we can just re like reduce the opacity of this brush a little bit, maybe take it down to like 40, and we can click. Whoops, we want to make sure we're painting with black here. Let me undo that. We want to make sure we're painting with black on uh, on the Maddie Mohawk layer. We're painting with foreground color of black, and just dab a couple times, and that's just going to help sort of blend him, uh, his shoulder and everything into these trees coming from the bottom. We can also hide a little bit of the the trees, any uh, the, sort of the, the, the straight up and down trees, anywhere where it's getting a little bit too dark and we feel the need for that. I like how we can still see a little bit of his skin down here. Uh, I think that's kind of cool. And then we have the trees sort of just fading right up over his shoulder, straight up out the mohawk on the top of his head. So that's kind of the difficult and time-consuming part is just blending all of these layers together and keeping track of what's where. The more of these double exposures you do, the more it's just going to be like, oh, here, I need to adjust this little bit or that little bit or whatever. And like here on the edge of the tree, we probably don't want that crazy soft edge and same down here, but we're not going to take the extra time to clean it up. Just stuff to keep in mind as you're making these, especially if you're doing them for like commission artwork or something that's going to go in your portfolio, you'd want to go in and spend more time making that edge look a bit more organic. Uh, but for the sake of this tutorial, let's move along. Uh, one of the things I'm, I'm going to try to do here is the angled trees layer. Maybe I'll just reduce the opacity a little bit. I think it's like, I don't know, 90, 95, 93, and that looks pretty good. I don't know. For some reason, I think it just looks good if it's got a little bit more fade to it down there. See how there's one light area of the trees there? I'm going to make my brush a bit smaller. Uh, set the opacity of the brush back to 100. Make it a bit smaller here uh, using that left, uh, left square bracket key. Make sure my foreground color is set to white and just paint over that little that little fuzzy, weird looking area there. All right, now we're going to duplicate our Maddie Mohawk layer by clicking and dragging him down to the new layer icon. Don't worry about all the extra brightening and weirdness that's going on. We're going to double or not double click. We're going to select this double circle and drag it down to the garbage. That's going to get rid of um, all those smart filters. And we're also now, you know, what? we're going to keep the mask. I think we're going to keep the mask and I'm going to go filter other high pass. And we're going to set, we're going to give this a high pass pretty high, go like 50 pixels. It's going to be just really defined, a crazy like mid-tone punch. And we're going to set this to the blend mode of overlay. And you can see what this is going to do. It's just really going to bring out a lot of detail in his eyebrow and the wrinkles in the shirt and everything like that. And we'll reduce the opacity kind of until it looks good. So it's too much, too heavy of an effect. Let's take it down to 45, 50%. I think that looks pretty good. 
and we're going to sort of adjust the overall sharpness of the entire thing. So I'm going to select the bottom layer here, the trees layer on the bottom that is not the color gradient fill. Hold down shift and select the Matty Mohawk layer. And we're going to merge the selected layers to a new layer by hitting command option E. That's control alt E on the PC. And you can see we have this crazy looking merged effect. What I'm going to do is go image adjustments desaturate number one and then filter other high pass and we'll give it a high pass not definitely not a 50 maybe like five or six or seven yeah five will probably work well we don't want too much of this haloing just a little bit of it hit okay and we'll set this to the blend mode of overlay as well and just reduce the see everything looks way too it's way over sharpened so reduce the opacity down 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 until it looks good and just that extra bit of sharpness helps it just jump out that little bit more and next up we're going to create a quick lens flare i've done a ton of these in a ton of my tutorials create a new layer we're going to name this flare we're going to grab our brush tool and i'm going to set my foreground color to white i'm going to make my brush quite a bit larger maybe something right about there i'm going to click once and then i'm going to duplicate this layer command or control j and i'm going to shut that flare layer off i'm going to select the bottom flare layer we're going to go edit free transform and we're going to make this much larger so just drag it out i'm holding down shift and alt while i drag that corner uh handle there'll be shift and option on the mac it just scales it outward from the middle and keeps it as a perfect circular flare shape hit the little check icon and then we're going to go image adjustments hue saturation and i'm going to tick on colorize i'm going to reduce the lightness and boost the saturation way up and then i'm going to make this pretty orange so I'm going to go with like that yellowish orange color. Uh, I can turn the center flare back on. Now the bottom flare, the orange one, I'm going to set to the blend mode of screen. And the top flare, I'm going to set to the blend mode of linear dodge add. And then with linear dodge add, I want to reduce the fill opacity. It gives me this very sun-like effect. It's really cool. So fill opacity of like 25. And then an opacity here for the orange flare of, I don't know, like 60 or something like that. That looks pretty good. And we'll select both of these flares, right? And I'm going to drag it up and put it up here, up in his hair, right? Just so we have some like crazy, you know, extra light effect action happening up there add some dynamic this and depth up to that part of the image uh, and let's let's go ahead and add a color balance adjustment here and do some overall color balance adjustments so let's begin with the highlights i want to pump more yellow into the image overall maybe pump a, a touch more green i'm gonna swing it back and forth you know i'll go with a little magenta actually there's red there's cyan i think i like the red let's go to our uh, mid-tones well you know actually let's go to our shadows i don't know why i'm working with it this way a little bit of blue in the shadows actually looks good. A little bit of green, a little bit of red, cyan. I think I'll go with a little bit of cyan in the shadows. Now let's go to the mid-tones. Now I know we're going to push yellow. I think we'll push a little magenta and red. We'll push red into the mid-tones. Great. So we just created sort of this global overall. Let me just, you know what? just close my properties panel we just created like this global color effect you see how it just kind of like warmed and toned everything up nicely and last but not least we'll do a very quick um vignette edge create a new layer we're just going to call this vig for vignette go edit go fill contents 50 percent gray okay sounds good to me filter lens correction i know we're flying through it but hang with me here uh we're going to go custom right there the custom tab and then down here we're going to set vignette amount to negative 100 and the midpoint, I don't know, plus 25, plus 20, something like that. A pretty pretty hefty size vignette. Hit OK. And we would just set this to the blend mode of overlay. And you can see it gives us this nice vignette around the edges. So it's a subtle effect, but it's there. Helps the tips of the trees down here pop a little bit more. Um, and really, based on the way all of this works, if you really don't like the way the edge of these trees work, you could still come back down here to the angled trees mask. You could like grab your brush and make the brush tool a little bit smaller, paint with black, and you could paint some of this effect away. Now, be careful taking away too much of it because you are still applying that sharpness and you know it'll pick up the edges of the trees and you'll see a little something something in there that won't quite look right. Um, uh, but, you know, hey, use your discretion, go through, you can build this effect out so easily and so quickly that there's really no reason not to be doing these double exposures and doing these double exposures all the time. So that's really it. If you enjoyed the video, again, make sure you drop a like on this tutorial, subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video in the future for creating a double exposure effect in Photoshop with smart objects, smart filters, and a hundred other things. That's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Daniel Dodson, I'll catch you in the next one.